This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, well, we're going to continue. Ashley, right. All I'm asking is that. Now we're chatting. Okay, we're ready. Consideration. Are we? Go ahead and keep picking this off. There you go. Montiel. Montiel. All right. <laughs> oh. uh, well, you got to call it to order yeah. first. Yeah. We got to go through that whole thing. So I'll call for real the, meeting. Uh, meeting of the Joint uh, City Council Planning Commission this report. Uh, to order. Uh, call the roll for the City Council, please. Pro Tem Johnson? Here. Councilman Mitchell? Yeah, here. Councilman Nowak? Here. Councilwoman Walchuk? Here. And Mayor Walagora? Here. Thank you. Yeah. Special Planning Commission will uh, come to order. We'll call the roll call, please. Boyda? Peterson? Here. Oh, Van Wagner? Here. Gilmore? Saber? Here. Bauer? Here. Costala? Here. No quorum, thank you. All right. All right, so let's <laughs> Allegiance of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, first of all, everyone, for coming today and for being flexible with the time. We appreciate that very much. Um, we do have some new people on the team, so I thought it would be good to level set with a few things. Um, first of all, kind of why we're here and what the CIP is for. So I'm going to start out with that and then I'll turn it over to kind of going through some of our items. So um, the first thing is, so we'll be reviewing 2023 pr primarily, but we review through 2028. Um, it details six years of planned improvements. Um, it's updated annually, so we do this once a year. Um, and the intent of the CIP is to ensure the following things. So the first thing is coordination of projects to minimize project costs, a coordination with community plans and the budget. It assists in the implementation of the comprehensive plan, matches community needs with resources, anticipates and plans for major investments, and better positions the community for grant eligibility and borrowing. Um, and that's a big one um, as we look through, you know, grant opportunities and different projects we have going on around town. That's always a question that is asked. How does it relate to your master plan? Um, and um, is this maybe even a priority project? So one thing that's new that you might have noticed on your CIP documents that wasn't there before um, is in the CIP um, section specifically, we added a flag for if the item is tied to the master plan and really wanna make sure that everyone in the room is familiar with the master plan where you can find it. And if you haven't had an opportunity to view it, it's on our webpage and I can send the link back out to everyone. It's on the planning development and zoning webpage on our website. Um, so you'll see that flag um, to designate if it is tied to the master plan. And I guess from an expectation standpoint, what we would ask of all of you today is to ask questions. Um, like I mentioned, familiar, familiarize yourself with the goals of the comprehensive plan. Um, think about as we go through what should be reprioritized possibly but also what should be discussed that is not in the CIP that should be maybe, or that um, you know has been discussed in the past and you don't see it there, especially as it relates to the master plan. So um, be thinking about those things. Um, and then in terms of next steps after we're done here today, um, so Anna will review the CIP against the 22-23 budget. Um, and then projects may require some modification depending on where the budget comes in versus where we come in today. So that's kind of our next step after this meeting. So with that, um, any questions before we turn it over to the first person? What was public comment. Oh, okay, public comment. <clears throat> Do we have anyone online from the public? 
No public comment. Okay. Um, okay, so with that, uh, Anne, we're going to start with the DDA fund. All right, good evening. Can everyone hear me okay? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, great. So I will just touch on some of our top priorities and anything that's changed from the past. So our top um, number one project that we're already in the in the process of doing is the review of our DDA boundaries and update to our TIF plan. Um, as I mentioned at a previous city council meeting, we have received 75% funding for that um, project through the MEDC. Um, this might be split between this fiscal year and then the next fiscal year, um, depending on when we hit the key milestones that the MEDC set up. Um, but that is something that uh, our top priority for our board is already in the works. Our facade grant program and our economic development fund are two ongoing um, projects and funding we put in the budget if money allows. Um, those have been two long-standing projects of the DDA um, that roll over every year. And then as far as additional projects we hope to take under in the next few years, um, purchasing new flower planters and bike racks. This is something we've already invested uh, about $6,000 in already, but we want to update the rest of um, the flower planters that we rent out to businesses downtown and then alleyway improvements as well with the um, city closing the alleyway to automobile traffic last year, it's something we've talked about having a, a more active role in, whether it be the purchase of furniture or flower planters, things like that. Um, so no solid plan right now, but something that we want to put a little bit of money in the budget for um, to make that a more pedestrian friendly usable space. Um, and then lastly, we did add in um, Culligan Plaza updates, depending on the timeline with the city um, with those with those updates and if additional funding is needed um, since that is very important for our downtown. So that is a new one um, in our CIP for this year as well. So those are the main um, kind of high points of it um, mm -hmm. as well. Our public art and placemaking is something that we use for our Fresh Waves pro program and other opportunities as they come up. And then our final two kind of last priorities are downtown parking modifications as we're looking at paid parking. Um, and then a historic plaque project that's something we'd like to look at in the future as well. Any questions for Ann? Okay. Thanks, Ann. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. So we're going to jump down to page three um, and talk about. Planning. So I will um, go through this one. We have three to talk through. Two of them are new. So the first is a zoning ordinance update. So um, our zoning ordinance was last updated in 2010. We've been making modifications. Um, the issue, one of the issues that we have with the ordinance right now is that the way that it's formatted, it's extremely difficult to update. So when we have updates to the <coughs> ordinance, uh, right now, we're just putting PDFs on the web page, so it gets difficult to keep track of the changes. Um, with that, there will be some, I think, natural changes that come along with it and proposed revisions. So that's what we're proposing. NEMCOG, uh, Denise Klein, who you're familiar with, helps us with that. Um, and then the second is the Thunder Bay River Center. So you'll notice the dollar amount there. Um, the majority of that is the grant proposal. So um, only a small portion of that is allocated funds that we already have allocated. Um, and we're doing 5,000 a year from the city for that project. Um, and then public art, this is not new. Uh, we allocate $5,000 a year for any public art opportunities that our department might be able to be involved in. And that's really it from the planning development and zoning team. Any questions for me? Okay. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on to Chief Forbush, who's online. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Ever sounded so good. <laughs> great, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry about that. Trying to be respectful of the number of people in the room today, Other, otherwise I would be there joining you. I have just a few projects and I do have a short uh, a short video if I'm able to use it, just real, real short. Uh, but first I'd like to talk briefly on equipment fund. 
uh, looking down the road several years to 2027 and 28, uh, we need to start planning for the replacement of our primary engine, which is a 1994. Uh, at that point, based on today's pricing and a 3% increase each year, that's what they told us it would be. Uh, we need to plan out about $720,000 at that time. Uh, the current truck has been very well maintained by our expert mechanics at DPW, and uh, we'll, we'll hold out that number of years, but we need to start looking at that. Uh, we also have a new project this year. Uh, and that is that, as you may or may not know, the U.S. Coast Guard station across from City Hall is no longer staffed by the Coast Guard. It is used uh, by the State Police Marine Division, but their dive team can't activate without the entire team. So the two guys in Alpena can't go out until the guys from Gaylord and wherever else, Traverse City, get here as well. So that's not really a rescue kind of thing. That's a more of a recovery after the fact. Uh, the fire department has historically been equipped with a Boston whaler. I think it's about a well, 16 footer, maybe um, nice boat for uh, rescue in the river, but not so good in Thunder Bay, uh, way too small for that. Uh, and the nearest Coast Guard presence is in Taos and St. Ignace, and they're certainly willing to, uh, to respond, but they can't respond very quickly. Uh, we're doing some very interesting training with them this week. You may notice out at the boat harbor. Uh, but in Thunder Bay, there are some very, very rough seas. Uh, the water conditions there can be very uh, significant, particularly in the off season when other uh, providers, sheriff and DNR, the people with big boats, uh, take their boats out before it's fully frozen. And that's, that's another, uh, another issue there. Uh, when the boats are staffed, they run out of the marina, but the people aren't there. They're at the sheriff's office near the airport or DNR can be anywhere, but they aren't in the city anyway. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to do a, a water rescue initiative. Uh, we've started doing uh, some additional training to enhance our ice rescue capability and then add uh, cold water and warm water capability to that. And we'd like to add a personal watercraft, a specialized uh, personal watercraft uh, that can carry three people and can carry a, a sled behind that you can bring victims in and so forth. Uh, the fastest way to get to a victim in the water. Uh, we lost a dog a few years ago and it felt it, it was terrible because it was just too rough to take the, the little rowboat out and nobody else's boat was in and, and there was just nothing that could be done. And I know it's a dog, but it's important to people. So. We'd, we'd like to make sure that we're always capable of, of helping folks if they need to. Um, Charlie, I'm gonna try to see if this will screen share. And if it will, I'd like to run this. I just leave it in the little window. That gives us a pretty good idea. Get rid of that. 
Boom, and we're back. Um, thank you for uh, for watching that. I think it's uh, very telling of the capabilities of the craft. Uh, we're requesting in the CIP in the coming year thirty thousand dollars for that project, which will include the watercraft and a couple of dry suits. Um, that takes us through the equipment fund. Uh, the last equipment project, which mistakenly was put under fire and general fund, which was not the correct place to put it, are support vehicles. And the next support vehicle was scheduled initially for 23 to 24. We have moved that up to request it in the coming budget because Roz, the world's best mechanic that takes care of our fleet, uh, tells us that the likelihood of the, uh, the escape that we're replacing, making it to July is very remote. He says, just drive it until the motor blows up and then don't drive it anymore. So we, we really need to replace other support vehicle. That's the one used by the deputy chief training officer. Uh, the other two projects there are, <clears throat> excuse me, functional fitness equipment, uh, which is the balance of the equipment needed for the firefighter fitness initiative and agility test. <clears throat> and this other project that isn't really ours, but it is. Uh, and that in, out of general fitness, there's a, a workout facility in the public safety building that's used by police and fire and all city employees and their families and uh, are able to use it. Unfortunately, when we put that together a number of years ago, we put it together with old donated equipment, which is pretty well wore out now. Uh, we put 6,000 in this year to replace one of the treadmills. That's the most, uh, the most actively used equipment uh, and in consultation with the manager where we'd like to put 6,000 in the next two or three years to uh, try and bring it up to speed so that it has all the necessary equipment to uh, and to fully embrace and encourage wellness and fitness amongst our employees both police and fire and elsewhere uh, so I think that's pretty much all we have for new projects in the next year and we appreciate your support thank you Okay. Okay. For the podium, or is here? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have six projects um, on the books this year. Um, I believe you've seen all of them before. They're pretty standard. Uh, the first one, obviously, is staying with the scheduled replacement of our patrol vehicles. Uh, that is our rolling offices for all the officers. Um, as you'll see, uh, we only went to out to 2425 for the projected cost for the vehicles. Uh, like so many things that we're dealing with now, costs are extremely unpredictable at this point. And along with that, unfortunately, also delivery dates, um, whether it be vehicles or pretty much anything else you can name, uh, we are seeing huge lags in delivery time right now. And then they say, oh, and by the way, this is new, the new price. So. Total disclosure, this is a best guesstimate for these prices on, on this project. Um, but uh, we should be seeing, we're going to be staying with a Ford um, all-wheel drive utility vehicle, as you know, as an Explorer. Um, with all the equipment that we carry and so forth, it's just the best practical vehicle, especially in our winter environments. Um, we have kind of an exciting prospect right now and at the, the last sentence in my narrative I indicated that we're always looking for different funding opportunities um, and tomorrow we're meeting for I think the third time with uh, enterprise uh, fleet management enterprise rental companies and so we have been discussing the option of leasing vehicles um, and so that is looking very promising right now uh, not only for the for the PD but for some other city vehicles also potentially so uh, we met with the rep last week in Grand Rapids at a conference, and uh, it looks to be very promising, to, I think, uh, a more economical way for the, for the city to uh, continue on. And at the same time, also keeping the, the fleet fresh start, instead of driving vehicles until they drop, which is never a good thing. So that is the first project on that. Um, the project two is uh, the purchase of four uh, 800 megahertz radios for our patrol vehicles and you'll see that those would be encryption capable radios uh, the projected price which should be a pretty solid price I spoke with the with the Motorola rep 
uh, when I was building the CIP project. And she was able to give me some pretty solid numbers for, uh, for next year. What we are doing along with our mobile radios and our patrol cars, uh, also our, what we call our preps, our portable radios that we carry on our person, um, they are all ending the life cycle right now. Basically, they become boat anchors. At that point, uh, Motorola will not service them if they can even find parts. So um, along with replacement, we are upgrading our ra radios to what we call encryption capable. Uh, it's basically a, um, uh, uh, a more private channel when we're discussing more sensitive things. Um, I think many of you, have, I've given this example before, we've had a couple of major incidents where like evidence has been found on the street. Uh, it was a gun. Uh, and during our radio, normal radio traffic back and forth in our communications, scanner land, as we call it, pick that up. And as NASA rolled up to the scene, we actually had civilians standing around, you know, can I pick this up and so forth? And we, we can't have that. Uh, so it truly is an officer safety uh, case uh, integrity type of issue that we're looking at. So we're going to be having at least one channel that will be work. It's called encrypted capable on these radios. With the purchase of these four mobile radios, our entire fleet will be at that capability along with our preps. Uh, third project is the standard replacement of um, our conductive electrical weapons, commonly known as a taser. Um, this is an extremely uh, valuable tool that the officers use. It's a less than lethal uh, option that we have instead of a firearm. Um, and it, uh, it is also a, a, an officer safety and a public safety um, uh, priority to have these updated. And just like radios or anything else, they have a shelf life. Um, and they're also coming up with new updated products and they usually have a, um, a warranty, I believe is about, Eric, was it three year? Five year, five year on that one. So every five years, imagine that they no, they're no longer under warranty. And so there's also a liability issue there also if we use an outdated um, device. And project number four, this is something that we um, we have some experience with right now. With if you uh, are familiar on, on 11th Avenue, you'll see the two flashing radar signs, and we purchased those um, really as a result of the closure of the on Bagley Street, the bridge there. We were getting a lot of complaints about speeding vehicles and so forth. Uh, we we shopped around with a lot of different vendors, settled on that particular product, and the signs went up and the complaints dropped right off. Um, not only, I mean, it's they're just a great thing. It's what we call a force multiplier for for us uh, because it's like having an officer standing there saying slow down, and it also lets the public know, hey, we, we hear your concerns and we're trying to do something for you here. So we are looking to purchase additional radar signs. Uh, they're called portable, but they're not really because they're actually quite large and they're quite heavy. So, um, but we are looking at some different options there also, but we are looking to purchase four or maybe six signs. And initially the plan is they're going to probably going to be on the, the thoroughfares of, uh, of the city, Chisholm Street, uh, Washington State, and then we'll probably move the ones on 11th just kind of round as we need them. But I would like to get them posted on the main, the main streets in the city to start off with. Eventually, I'd like to see a few more on the on the heavily traveled streets in town. But they have been very, very um, successful. Um, the next project, number five, kind of in the same vein, uh, is a radar traffic trailer. Um, that is something that has a few more capabilities. Uh, it has a large, large uh, electronic display sign, also, also solar powered. And with that, you can put on different messages on it. You can put, you know, please slow it down or thank you for slowing down or COVID testing station to the right. Uh, you can do a variety of things with it, just not speed enforcement. Um, and so we've talked with Steve and, and Rich prior to that, that something like that would be useful as they're having you know, work projects around the city uh, that they want to alert people about their speed and slow down construction ahead, that type of thing, um, we thought would be very helpful. 
We have applied twice so far for a grant with AAA. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't make the cut. Um, but um, regardless of a grant or not, we do feel that it'd be a very uh, available piece of equipment to add to the city inventory. So we we're asking for that. And then lastly, um, is we are in a five-year cycle, replacement cycle for our, uh, what we call our body armor or our bulletproof vest. They have a five-year warranty. Um, that's a, nation, our, uh, a nationwide standard for all manufacturers. They're only good for five years. They're, they're good well beyond that, but they're only warranted for five. Um, so every five years, we replace our vest. And um, ours just came in yesterday, and we ordered them back in August. So I was I started this off by talking about delays and expenses, and this is a prime example. We ordered these back in August. Normally they would be within a month or so, maybe six weeks, and now we got them six months. So um, these are the things we're dealing with. The good thing is that the price did the same. So that'll be a project for five years down the road because we just got them. But that is it. Um, any questions? Thank you very much. Ma'am, may we be excused? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. I'm going to go on a pizza. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay, there is anchovy. We're going to switch gears a little bit, and Shannon is going to walk us through the marina fund and some building maintenance. Okay. Um, as most of you who aren't aware, this year the marina has started the revitalization um, projects down there. As part of that, one of the very first things we did was the master plan through the surveys and everything that we did down there, talking to the voters and everything else. We kind of developed a full plan, so that's why it's projects there, as most of these are driven by the master plan that is under development right now. Um, Ongoingly, we're trying to do some work to the Marina shop building. You'll see there's 135,000 in there. We are hoping by the end of the month to hear from a school um, development on the possibility of a grant to repair the outside of the building and do some much needed repairs inside. Um, we are also here seeing some other minor projects in here. Um, we're going to start going to Waterways Commission again and requesting funding from them. To help. The first thing will be to uh, repair or replace the fixed docks that are down there with the floating docks. Um, some of the things that we're hearing from voters coming in from out of town is they have a hard time getting around or knowing that downtown is two blocks away from them. So part of that is some way finding signage around the marina to direct them downtown. Um, doing some more upgrades to the high efficiency lighting is uh, also a priority in there. Um, ongoing, we do try to keep the docks in good repair, so every year we do put money towards repairing the docks that are down there. Um, another large project that we see upcoming is the utility pedestals down there are all starting to fall apart and or are not large enough for the larger boats that we're seeing now. So we need to upgrade those all to 50 amp service. We're going to, again, go to waterways on that in a couple of years. Um, another large project that was actually probably more prevalent than even requesting the fixed tax repair was doing something with the restrooms down there to open them up to all the voters, not just to the um, just to the slip holders. So we have come up with a plan to do the restrooms down there to keep private bathrooms for the voters, but then in addition, but to um, open to the public so that voters who are coming in for day use also have use to the bathrooms. And then in addition to that, uh, I'd like to be at the request of the voters again, they'd like a social gathering district, or kind of a social little area down there. And one of the things I heard is they wanted picnic tables and, and, and a fire pit. So that social, that little social gathering area is one of the things that we have in there. It's kind of out of the way because there's just other higher priorities there. Are there any questions for the Maria one?
Okay, and moving on to building maintenance. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of new projects in there. And there's probably upgrades in prices and things that we want to see happen on a larger scale than we would have before. Um, we want to go through the entire building and actually we can really take the inside of the entire building. Um, so people are sad the wallpaper may be going. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what we're planning is kind of a floor by floor, um, starting in the basement, working our way up, redoing the building. One of the largest things we probably need to do is the windows in the building leak air at best. They're not efficient anymore, and we need to do some upgrades on that. Um, a few just other small projects, other than that, fixing the ceilings and air. Um, one of the large ones that's upcoming is our elevator. It's kind of getting a little tired. Five years, they said I have to look at possibly upgrading that. Um, any questions on City Hall? Okay, going over to fire and police, they're kind of they kind of mirror each other for the most part. Um, we're going to try to get some high efficiency lighting, kind of finish up that building as far as getting that stuff done. Uh, probably one of the largest things that we have upcoming here in the next little bit is we do need to deal with a couple of boring issues there. The carpet is 25 years old and starting to through, and we need to start replacing that here this year. In addition, we have one more uh, set of VFDs that we need to put on to the heating cooling system to get that up to where we need it. And um, that was pretty much what we were doing for the year here. Outside the concrete around the exterior of the building is starting to deteriorate to the point where we need to do something with it. So I've got some money set up here for parking lots across all of them to basically do like we did on 11th where we cut out the joints and fix them. That's all we really need to do there because the concrete itself is still in good shape. It's just a matter of the joints have started to move around. So if we build back out as you take care of a lot of it. Other than that, just the building is getting to be 25 years old. That's where you need to start looking at, at doors and things like that. So those are an interesting thing to place there. Um, uh, we're looking at refreshing the landscaping around the outside of the building here in the next couple of years, too. Uh, the universe have just gotten to the point where they're old and tired again, the building's getting to the point where we need some, some effort into it to keep it looking nice and continuing on. We did put in a bigger project for Ambulance and Fire to redo their kitchen. It's gonna take more effort, we believe, than just the money that we had sent in there this year. The amount of use that kitchen gets, it gets used three times a day heavily, so they need some more industrial um, kitchen kitchenware in there other than just cabinets. So that one got pushed out a little bit just because we think the carpet's a higher priority than the cabinets right now. And we'll try to get that into the works here over the next little bit. Any questions on those two? Um, I do, Shannon. I, I think you answered my question about the new variable frequency drive, what you're saying is, is there's one left because that's been brought, that's been brought to us before and I thought we'd have a place, but there's apparently several of them. There's and, several of them and they're telling me there's one more drive that needs to be fixed on it. According to the, the HVAC guys, they said there's one that hasn't been done yet, so we need to do that one yet. Okay. Uh, it was kind of done in, in chunks and in spurts, so. This is, I think, the last, we, what we believe is the last of the major upgrades that need to be done to the HVAC system center. Okay. And is that similar to to the energy efficient lighting upgrades? Because we, we did some of the bays before. We this did is... some of the bays before. We think a lot of the lighting that's left is in the parking lots. So all the lights in the parking lot are what we're looking at. And anything that we haven't done yet is what we're going to try to get finished. With. Okay. Awesome. That was it. The only other one that I would like to point out is the HVAC testing and balancing for City Hall. Um, it's priority one. Just talking to our HVAC contractors here recently, 
important, finding out how important that was. It was kind of not done when the systems were upgraded. Um, they're telling me that that will pay for itself in a year and a half if we get it done. So that's got to be a pretty high priority for us to get done here at all the buildings. I'm trying to get public safety done right now just because that we caught right now for convention to be a $30,000. Uh, repair bill the other day just by doing a little calling out of the system. So if we do these testing and balancing, it's going to save us. Just uh, one quick question or comment. Uh, we've kicked the, the kitchen down, the, kicked that can down the road a long ways. And I understand we want to get into the, the higher upgrades and stuff like that. But, you know, I'd like to see that get a little bit higher on the priority list because that's been on there for five years. and. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem and I toured the building last year, and it really does need some help all the way through. I mean, we're at the point where think, their doors are starting to fall off, and, and it's a pretty tough environment to kind of live and work in. So, you know, that's that's my thoughts on that. Is that whatever we can do to kind of kick that back up a little bit higher? And it's just, and, and we talked a little bit about that internally, yeah. and we would love to move that up. It's just larger than you know what we had initially. Um, looked at, but we may, we're going to look at some options to try and phase it in so we can at least get the cabinets replaced. Um, and I think, I think the, the larger ticket items are going to be the countertops and the, um, the appliances. But if we can look at like maybe some nice used cabinets, even if we end up replacing them down the road, that may be an option. Well, and if I can talk later i i have a lead on helping with that okay, okay. Yeah. thank you thanks shannon okay we'll turn it over to steve and i won't go through all the things he's going to talk about <laughs> stop for breaks you know an hour or so and we'll stop for a break and, uh -huh. Well, first um, is IT, um, a lot of cyclic, uh, just replacement of, of things in that, and all of those items, um, the police uh, in-card systems, the tablets, those kind of go in sync with the vehicles that he buys every year. Um, but the, the three big ticket items uh, for this coming year, uh, one being the phone system. Um, Yes, we did just buy a phone system, or it seems like we just bought a phone system, but it's it's getting old already. And part of of this is that uh, we have about 100 phones. The county is on the same system. They have about 300 phones, and they would like to go to the new system because what's been what's happened is we we went with a um, uh, kind of a lower uh, um, provider, lower uh, class provider. They were originally or eventually bought out by Mitel and now Mitel promised us that they would take us along for the ride and yeah that promise didn't last very long so they're you know we can continue to use our phones they work fine but the management on the back end is not as nice as it could be um, and you know I, I just think this is the the right thing to do at this point because it's going to give us better phones at our desks um, they're they're a faster speed we can plug computers into them which basically eliminates switches in buildings. Um, it's kind of a long, drawn-out process, but it's uh, it's just it's, it's a heads and tails a much better phone system than what we have. Staying with the same type is going to be an IP phone system like we have, but um, this is just um, kind of the probably the the route we may may or should have taken to begin with, but the money just wasn't there. Um, this is we're in a much better spot now, and I I think this is the way to go. Um, we just went through a, a demo for BSNA cloud conversion. Um, this uh, it kind of starts with the building department, the permitting and things like that. Um, right now, really aren't supposed to run BSNA outside the server because you it, it they don't like it for security reasons and all kinds of things. The company themselves don't support it. But now they're starting a cloud version wherein you can take an iPad out to the house and you can be able to look up the history of that house and the, and the different things related to those permits and things like that instead of marking it all down or printing it all off and taking it out with you um, so this is um, really going to help out the building department 
uh, planning zoning. Um, and then I just see this kind of growing into some of the other departments. So um, this is the first step in it and we're, we're kind of gonna be the guinea pigs for them. It sounds like it's coming out in September. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at buying into that and kind of starting that process. Um, the other larger item is uh, cemetery Wi-Fi and um, cemetery uh, software and computer and everything. What we have right now is we operate everything off out of the chapel uh, up front. So if, if the attendant is out and about in the cemetery somewhere and somebody stops them and says, hey, can you tell me where this person's buried or help me out with this or whatever, they both have to go all the way up to the chapel. You can't go into the garage. There's nothing in the garage at all. There's nothing there. So we're going to run some fiber out to the garage, get a computer based out there so he can log on and show people things right there, right amongst everything, as opposed to coming back up to his office in the chapel. So that's, that's, um, I frankly, I can't believe that we haven't asked for that <laughs> before. It's, it's, we've operated out there for so long. Um, and that's, it's never been a thing, but, uh, it's it's being asked for now and requested, so I think it's it, it should be a, a project that we we kind of take on. So, um, but like I said, everything else is pretty much what you see every year uh, in the IT budget. So, if there's any other questions? Uh, just one quick question. Uh, one of the newest things that I've been noticing a lot with more city governments is uh, the ability for someone to send in a text uh, to directly to any department head in here, and they can respond at their convenience. Will that be something that the new phone system will be capable of or have those kind of abilities? That I, you know, I don't know. I haven't heard too much of that. We're, we're actually looking at a software right now called text my gov. Okay. Could be purchased next year. It's just part of the, um, the uh, new technology complementary systems that we would look at doing. And um, that has some capabilities to it that are um, pretty interesting. It's a texting based where it's an auto reply type of thing or you can text in and, and sign up for different uh, alerts and we will text out alerts to you as a group, um, that type of thing. Um, the new phone system, I'm not sure on that. I, will I can check into that. All right, yeah, I'm just wondering. I mean, that program there actually sounds like it would probably meet the needs of what we've been hearing a little bit. Yeah, it's actually, we've gotten, we've gone through a couple of demos on it and I think it's, um, there's no real commitment. It's just the first year is a little more expensive, you know, for the setup and everything. And then beyond that, it's, not a lot of money and it's not you're not tied into the contract so if we just don't get the usage we'll we just drop it you know so it's some it, it's something i think we want to look into for next after the budget year thanks steve i had a quick question on the cemetery um is it possible to get um, what people ask for like who's where so that the public can access that so they don't have to ask somebody they can just pop on that that's um we were kind of getting to that there's there's a gis system built into the cemetery program it just has to we have to touch every single square and and tie it to every person that's buried that's that's the thing that's holding us back as it's a pretty pretty large project to to get after but um it's something that we are looking towards and so then people could actually go on the website and just look for themselves and, and you know key in a, a search term and, and find out where that person's buried in. Thank you. Steve, what part of this plan improves the Wi-Fi in this building? <laughs> for, for who? For for the public or for <laughs> for a guest. For a guest, yeah. I mean, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Senator Thomas was here the other day and after our meeting he needed to get on he needed to get online to to have a virtual meeting and he came up here and there was some struggle um i've had a couple of instances myself where i just i don't i don't want to suck up all your wi-fi i just want i just need to get out of the building yeah i need to check something on my email see like right now i couldn't check my email i could on my phone mm -hmm. but i can't check my city email on my computer yeah because it should um the, the thing is is we have the agreement page so you you get in and you get connected, but then you're not really connected until you go on your browser and it automatically goes to that agreement page where it says, I won't do anything bad. And then you have to agree to it and then it connects you. That's what I'm doing. So, so yeah. there's a there's a connection page. It'll show up on your phone too when you when you connect. So it's not so 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 like when you go to like you go to a hotel, they give you a guest Wi-Fi so you can you're not really you're not necessarily on their secured Wi-Fi, you're on right. We'd have nothing. That's what that's what the guest Wi-Fi would be here, and, and it's the same kind of thing. If you go to the hotel and you try to connect to it, 
once you get in, it provides that first page where you say, yes, I won't do anything terrible on your Wi-Fi, and then it takes you through. Um, it's the same same process here, yeah. So it's not an issue. It's so it's more of an it's a user issue. Yeah, and, uh, and 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 device issue too. It's it depends on the types of devices and stuff. Um, I can have him look at it a little bit and just see what we can. Yeah, we were having trouble with his Mac book. Oh, it's a Mac book. But um, I mean, the signal here, like the Wi-Fi signal, is strong enough, though. Yeah. So, okay. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, because we have that like right there is is one for this this room, and it actually covers the entire second floor. Um, the basement is the is the rough one. The basement's hard because it's it's all the the block walls and stuff that uh, it's hard to get to. Um, I was just concerned, and I'm sure you have this already squared away. But a lot of times when you log on to those inner, and they say don't do anything bad, they also tell you this is not secure. Right. Uh, we have that covered here. I mean, we must, right? Mm. It's pretty sensitive information with. No, well, that's the thing is, is our side is secure. Yeah. City Wi-Fi is secure. So what we do is we provide that Wi-Fi out to everyone else and it's not secure. And it's it's the same as when you go to Meyer, Walmart, the library, Okay. They'll, they'll tell you it's not secure. And so that's the thing. And that's that's why they tell you to to not, you know, don't go to the donut shop and connect to the Wi-Fi and do your banking, you know, because it's not secure. And they, you know, more and more you see those warnings now. So people know, so people are aware. Thanks. Yep. I guess if nobody has any questions, any other questions? Move on. Vehicles, I guess, is next. All right. I can find them. Page one. Yep. Okay. Um, basically we're just looking at, you know, needs, needs based replacement because, you know, much of this is, is just so expensive. Um, but what we're, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be in the CIP and they're, they're there. And usually throughout the year where we do some creative things and, you know, Sean has come to me and said, you know, the, 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 you know, the frame and the engine and the cab on these trucks is good. Can we use the money instead of replacing one truck, use it and buy two you know, two dump boxes for these trucks. And we've done that throughout the years to do, you know, to, to cover some of those things and that works. Um, but the, uh, what we're kind of seeing now and what we're going to start to investigate, um, I know we're doing something with, you know, the regular fleet mm -hmm. of cars, but there also is a huge trial out there for our renting equipment. And we can rent a piece of equipment for a year, brand new, turn it back in at the end of the year and get a brand new piece of equipment the very next year. And not have to put all this money into it constantly and, and deplete the the equipment fund, um, and and then also not paying ourselves to rent it, which is a whole other thing. You know, we've got if we have stuff that's over at the marina, they pay the equipment fund back to rent it, and it costs you a quarter, quarter even less than that, ten percent to go rent the vehicle from tractor, you know, from a um, Dodge Ford tractor than to rent it to ourselves and pay, you know, have the departments pay each other for it. So that is something we're gonna investigate in the next year or two here and, and we might make a, a change towards towards some things. There are a number of um, road commissions in surrounding areas that do that. And they, they get new a new fleet of equipment, you know, every year. So that's something that we wanna look into, so, but. And Steve, are there any vehicles in here that are eligible for lease through Enterprise? Or I, I didn't maybe the um, not maybe not on this one. Not in this one, I don't think. Um, this is a heavier the equipment. Maybe this, yeah, maybe the sign truck. And there's a couple of the wine trucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, we're just right in the middle of you know the research and presentations from Enterprise, so that'll be something that will be brought forward eventually to council. But it may end up. You know, depending on what they can get, just because of supply, you know, supply issues of vehicles, it may have to. Um, we may not see them until later in the fiscal year. But um, yeah, so we're going to have to adjust some of this as we, you know, move forward with that. Yeah. 
before you moved on, I just uh, can you clarify what a seventy-eight thousand dollar snowblower is? <laughs> a large one. It's a, <laughs> Like forty-five thousand. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, it does more than that. Or... Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's. You're, I'm not sure which ones these are, Shannon. I don't know if you know. Seventy. I'd have to go into the. Uh, um, twenty-one forms. That is one of the fan. The, it's a specialized uh, holders. I'm sorry. It's a holder. Okay. I think it's a holder. It's one of the specialized pieces of equipment that um, you see the attachments on the front. So when you buy them, that, that piece of equipment is quite pricey. It gets up there with mean like motors and 1928s and stuff like that. And then you put the attachments on it. That's what drives that all that high. Okay. Are, are pretty versatile. And stuff like that. Are a lot more reasonable than our actual yellow wire that you see. Okay, gotcha. Thanks. That was it. Okay. Anything else? Moving on. <laughs> yes, that's cemetery. Um, nothing new in cemetery. Just moving projects. Up. Um, repeating projects that don't make the budget necessarily. Um. Found and determined that the road resurfacing is going to get done. <laughs> it always seems to miss the budget, but it's <laughs> it definitely needs it. And it's, you know, because it misses the budget, now we're we're kind of up against the wall. So, but, uh, you know, nothing nothing new in there per se. Um, like I said, moving moving projects up or or uh, repeating if they don't make the budget. So. Any questions on those? Hopefully our investment um, of the perpetual lot care fund will, um, we will know in October uh, if we're gonna get anything. If the, as long as the interest rates are positive, we should get something. Um, but it's just kind of hard to budget for that right now if we're going to be nice to, to see first. Next year will be a little bit easier, hopefully to budget for it. All right. No questions. We can move on to lighting. Got a question? <laughs> we have mausoleums, mausoleum restoration, and mausoleum repairs. I'm just curious, what's the difference between those two? Oh. Try on that one. The restoration. Um, we want to do a little bit of preventative to try to find some time on the mausoleum. It's soft limestone, so it, it's at the point now where we have to do something with it in order to give us a few years to try to accumulate some money for that. We're going to do some sealing, trying to give us a little bit of time um, before we actually have to go in and actually pull pieces of stone out of the mausoleum and replace them. So the restoration project is just us doing some lengthening of the of the existing stone. You know, sealing it, things like that, cleaning it, trying to get the, the corrosion stuff off of it, and then we'll turn around in a few years and actually start trying to replace the limestone pieces that are disintegrating so bad that we can't do anything with them. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. And as we move forward, um, I was let everybody. I mean, this is um, for a lot of years. Rich did this kind of all on his own and work through it and um, we're kind of tackling it differently now and I give a lot of credit to Shannon for going through most of this because it, it just made more sense to us that the boots on the ground um, should be the people looking at these things and you know um, you can you can call all kinds of people and they'll all tell you which is the worst street in the city but the people who know it are the ones that are working out there in it and you know they'll tell you which one is the worst main in the city the one they're cleaning out and when it's uh, you know 18 degrees in the middle of the winter and they got to be out there um so shannon does a huge portion of this all on her own working you know with the the suez field person people 
um, and working with uh, the plant operators at both plants. Um, you know, working with DPW, she does a lot of work with DPW, so she, she you know, she does a lot of these things. So um, I'm the department head, so I get to present it all. I defer a lot back to Shannon because she's in, you know, in, in the fight and, and she's, you know, doing that stuff. So I, I, I'll defer to her throughout the night on, on most of this. So, um, the night. So, night. so yeah. Um, <laughs> are you doing a bathroom break? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Another two hours. Mm -hmm. And no. while we're thanking people, I mean, Montiel has <laughs> stepped up and really organized this. And then Cassie helps mm -hmm. put it all together. Yes. So, you know, I know we're just in the middle of this, but kudos to everyone that um, works on this. It's a huge document and undertaking. Um, so just moving on, uh, parks, um, nothing new per se, except the Starlight Beach Splash Park circulation system. Um, I spent more than a ton of money on water. Um, when we first built this system, it was uh, the thought that, no, no, we're just gonna, you know, use the water and let it, let it drain because the recirculating system was just another part of the system that was just so expensive. And we just didn't want to add that much to the price. And now we look at how much we spend on water and the system will kind of enclose all of that. And so we're not re, you know, we're not using up all the water throughout the year. So this will um, kind of capture everything and treats it internally, pushes it back out through. So you're, you're just recirculating all that water instead of dumping it away. <laughs> so. And with so, that, um, we do have potentially someone assisted, a group that's mm -hmm. going to be assisting with um, fundraising for that project. We hope. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I have in parks. Um, may I ask, I'm just looking at the $500,000 allotment for public roof restroom improvements. Mm -hmm. Let's look at that. <laughs> that's you know, that's a, about a, a million dollar project, almost a million dollars, um, nine hundred and seventy thousand. Um, we've got our we've got our grant for it, and so we have to proceed in the next two years and get those restrooms built. But it's a it's a restroom pavilion combination. Um, for, I think there's four restrooms, correct? Four family. There's two family, it's restaurants family and two. And then, um, it'll it'll mirror what Starlight Beach is. It's going to have like a public area. Where it'll have the um, two family restrooms attached to it. So that's that's programmed for right down here at Bayview. So that's we're kind of excited for that. That's going to be a big project, and we'll get that into design here pretty quick. The Blair Street Park improvements. Does that include? The um, here. the walkway. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Okay. So why is that? Is that not being improved now? We're gonna wait. It, it, it actually is. That yeah. The the we're gonna be bringing the the repairs to council here very fairly quickly okay. on that. Um, that should be that we're looking at possibly doing that in the spring. Okay. The okay. bids and and so we're gonna be bringing that to council to redo um, the twenty thousand out there. In 27, 28, I'm not sure if that was just kind of looking at the railings and all park amenities. Okay. Yeah. Well, and so that's something that's um, been expanded upon, you know, over the past two years as Shannon really got out there and took a look at the parks and, and what all we might want to do with them because not a lot was in this plan before. Right. So, you know, we have a, a recreation plan. So we thought, well, why don't we put some of those things in here? So yeah, well, all the all the check marks, you know, yeah. all those are, are where, you know, that came through the, in the plan. And those those kind of popped through last year when we when she first did that. Mm -hmm. so that's yeah, what, what an idea. Let's use our recreation plan to build our CIP. <laughs> all right. Um, public works. Um, nothing really new here, but we are going to do that Carter Street parking lot if it kills us. <laughs> <laughs> and then it keeps going in the budget and coming out. You know, sometimes it makes the budget, sometimes it doesn't even get that far. Then it makes the budget, and then we decide, no, we're doing something else. <laughs> so 
this um it's got to get done it's in it's in pretty pretty rough shape so it's time um as well as the city city hall parking lot um i'm not dating myself but i designed the city hall parking lot and i was a when i was a co-op student getting paid six dollars an hour or whatever it was <laughs> so it needs it it's time so those are those are the big ticket items in, in public works so could we possibly get a deal if we did both of them at the same time or no yeah you, you might be able to i mean it's um it is what it is i mean they're both fairly large projects so that you're you're going to get your your uh economy of scale you're going to reach that anyway and there's not a whole lot for bidders in this area for paving so <laughs> you're um you're going to get what you're going to get so is what is outdoor storage it's projected out five years but $250,000. That is, that's at DPW facility and it's just additional outdoor storage um, that, you know, that's dry <laughs> and we just get more room for stuff. You know, there's several things that we still store outside um, that just, you know, it uh, gets bad with the weather. And so it's just additional storage. But it's outside. Well, but it's out, outdoor storage. So it's, it sheds and in, in, you know, garages and, and things like, you know, uh, several garage bays in a row and that type of thing. And if there's no questions on the rest of that, on to local major streets. A lot of the same preventative maintenance, thin overlay projects are there. Um, those are, you know, we don't call out exactly which streets we're doing. Um, we always have some in mind, but others pop up, you know, uh, for things like that. So we like to kind of wait until we're, so we can use that money. And if it's there, we'll, we'll uh, kind of name the streets then. There's uh, Oxbow Resurfacing is in there, the subdivision, uh, that's Gilchrist and Thomas and Ralph and Parker. Yeah, so that um, area is needed for a while. Um, and, you know, you, you weigh the the cost of things and, and who it benefits. And, you know, for a long time, we never did anything with Ford Avenue because, you know, out past the plant because it doesn't benefit any city residents, you know, and so you, you, you got to weigh those things and how many people does it benefit. The, the roads in that Oxbow subdivision benefit those residents, and and that's how it. Yeah, it's a it's a closed loop that it's there, and but it uh, it's getting to be time. It's it's they they deserve uh, to get their stuff done as well. So we're gonna get to that. Um, got the high use alleys. Uh, that's a program that we've always got going. Um, the two new projects in local streets. Um, a Monroe Street special assessment out there where we'll go through and um, put in curb where there isn't curb now, um, get those folks taken care of. Um, they put in their request this past year, past fall, I think. So we've got money budgeted for that. Um, and then with the with the interest uh, in a couple properties, a couple areas on the North Industrial Highway, um, the extended version of it on the on the east side of US 23. Um, if those go through, you know, we've got to put a road to them. We'll extend the road that's there a little bit further. So that's out in 23, 24. Um, we see that project. So, and that is basically local streets. Anybody has any questions? We'll move on. To major streets, um, a lot of the same things there. Uh, preventive maintenance, things like that. Um, <laughs> that's kind of a little song you got going on there. Where did you hear my wife coming from? <laughs> um, nothing in the upcoming years that's new. Um, they've all been there a while. They're um, all needed projects, obviously. Um, getting down to uh, some Second Avenue Bridge projects that are new, that are out there three and four years. 
Um, they, uh, what we did this year, we've got um, bringing Charlie on board. Um, he's got a, a pretty good bridge background. And so um, he kind of went through all of our uh, reports that we got. You know, we, we pay lots of money for all these reports for the bridges that we are required to have by the state. And so he kind of went over with a fine tooth comb to figure out what, what we needed at the bridges and we're gonna start programming those out um, and just to show them in the CIP. And so, you know, we kind of know what we need to have coming up. You know, it's similar to the streets, but it's just never been done. They're, they're just kind of like more reactionary than anything. And so um, Charlie's taken care of that for us and, and gotten into them and, and kind of uh, pulled out the projects that need to happen and when they need to happen. So that's basically all the yellow you see in there. All the new projects are, are for the bridges. So if you had any questions on those, I'll probably direct you to Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> and then we move on to everybody's favorite sewer and water. Yay. <laughs> Let's see. In the sewer. Yeah, so the collection system, these are all projects that have um been in there and coming up. The North Second Avenue project continues to be in there. We're in hopes that we're gonna get the grant this coming year. Um, we came really close this past year for that grant um, and they kind of informed us on how to attack it this year and, and they think it'll be a favorable grant. So we're hoping that does go through and, and that'll be a um, pretty involved project as we're gonna have to get with, um, especially the first couple blocks by the bridge, we're gonna to have to get with business owners and property owners and, and such and kind of talk through the whole process with them. I know um, every time this comes up, I get a call the next day from, from Alpina Furniture and- from Yes, <laughs> so I think you can call all of us. <laughs> are we going to do? <laughs> so that's gonna be something, you know, we'll, we'll take a page out of MDOT's book and, and kind of meet with everybody and talk it through and we'll have to figure it out. You know, there'll be some, uh, there'll definitely be some things in there guiding the contractor to, you know, you're going to finish this entire block before you move on, you know, those types of things that we're going to require. So um, that's what we're, you know, in hopes that we're going to get. So um, you see the North Industrial Highway infrastructure expansion that goes with the street, but that's the sewer portion of it. So, you know, we extend the sewer and the water along with the street. So that's in there. Um, Few other projects uh, <clears throat> that have recently come up through, you know, just through uh, maintenance and things and things that have, have been happening and, and uh, you know, things that Shannon sees, you know, with Skip out in the field and what they do and what they, they think should happen to some of these. And of course, you're going to see all these same projects pop up again in the water because we don't, you know, unless it's an absolute emergency, we don't tear up an entire street just to do sewer. You know, if the water's brand new, okay, but usually it's both. You know, um, it just makes sense. So if we mirror those projects in both, you'll see them. Um, but unless there's any questions on the collection part of sewer, I'll move on to the plant. Um, this is one that's uh, that's been very, very beneficial having Shannon work directly um, with the plant operators. Um, she's got them pretty trained now. She went over and said, hey, look, you know, you need to give me a list and it's not just a list of projects. It's a, it's a list of wants, needs, and holy cow, I need to have this right now. You know, we need to identify those things and, and then prioritize them. And so that's what she helped help them with. And um, it's been great seeing some of the stuff come through and it's like, well, we've needed this forever. Well, why wasn't on your list before? You know, so that's it's been a good back and forth and, you know, um, talking with everybody and, 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 you know, getting familiar with the plants. So um, quite a few new ones in here. Um, I would defer to Shan if anybody's got any questions because she knows it pretty intimately, but um, I, uh, it's all stuff that, you know, needs to be done. And we've got, you know, the, our sewer and water plant uh, funds are healthy um, and we need to take care of some of the stuff. It's been a long while coming. Anybody had any questions on any of those? Going once. 
All right, we'll move on to the water fund. Um, like I said, a lot of the same here, same here. The, you see the new projects kind of mirror the new projects that were in sewer. Um, same kind of thing. You see the North 2nd Avenue project in here as well for the water main. Um, nothing out of the ordinary, just things that that need help, need work. There's no questions there. We can move on to water production. Again, Shannon working with the plant operator. Um, and uh, you'll see the big item up on top is the liquid fluoride inspection injection system. Um, that is, that's a big number. And it might be a little bit bigger than that if, you know, depending on the route we take and how we do it. But that is, is in there in case that's the route we decide to go. We want to get it in there. So, um, you know, the the powdered product for for fluoride is is like they said, it's kind of a dying art, and it it may not return for us. You know, we we've got enough to take us through June, um, and I think we'll be bringing this option or you know some options to council um, in March to to discuss it a little further and decide where we want to go, what we want to do. Um, there's a lot of things to consider with the liquid system. Um, it's a lot more dangerous environment than than what we have now. So there's a lot of a lot of things to think about, but we had to put it in there in case that's the route we wanted to take. So um, a lot of the other projects are just uh, either been in there for a while or the new ones are are things that that we just need that have worn out. Both plants are very old, um, and you know there's you, know, you focus on some of the bigger stuff every now and then, but you need to focus on the small stuff. Some of these are not considering how big the plan is and how expensive a new plan is. Some of these items are not that not that big. You know, a twenty thousand dollar fix here, a twenty five thousand dollar fix there, and it's um, not a lot of money considering what we might have to do going forward if if some of this stuff fails on us. So that's what I have. For that, anybody has any questions? So we have just one final thing, which is the long range projects. We've broken these out separately to show you. Um, it's really made up of the river center, which the majority of that would be from grant funding, but with our relationship with the River Center, we're including that in here for reference. Um, and then there are some additional for major street fund, marina and water, which I'll let Steve talk to. <laughs> give me a drink. Um, the major street construction, the one project is the second Avenue bridge and that's um, out there just as part of the you know the reviewing the the bridge reports and things like that it's another one of those that it doesn't have to be done right away but it's it's got to be out there and we want to show it um we haven't used this long range form i think in a while so um it's just good to see that we've got some stuff out there so um the 11th avenue concrete repairs i thought and you know, i think we moved that up but we forgot to take the six hundred thousand out of the long range because that's going in 26, 27 for a small urban. Okay. No, no, we have to finish Ripley. Yeah, right. No, but this is like we've got money in 26, 27. Oh, yeah. So I, I think that. To, that forgot to be taken out. We have to yeah. That too. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to. Because we had to shove it back for Ripley Boulevard. For people, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it is so going it is, in 26, 27. No, no it's going to it's gonna stay long in long range for now. <clears throat> Yep, and then I I would just defer to Shannon on the other two, the marina fund and the water fund ones. There's the, the marina, you know, mixed use building. The marina mixed use building. There was some talk down there about having a building on site um, for mixed use, um, possibly as opposed to having a large tent and have a building there that the brown trout can hold its events and things like that during the winter. Then it could be used for storage. It could be used as a shop for the marina operator operations and for our 
um, mechanics, things like that. So it's there is something that we're looking at long term. There's a lot of other things I need to take on in charge of that. But it is something that um, was part of the things and stuff like that for us to explore in the future. And then the water one, I don't have that. The so generator transfer switch replacement. Generator transfer switch replacement. We're having some issues with the generator. It, but it's it's got a ground lift. It will work. And then all of a sudden it doesn't work, and then it'll work, and then it won't work. So it's it's one of those things we need to keep that switch on the radar. Um, right now, in the last four times we haven't had a problem, but then all of a sudden it won't switch over. So it's one of those things that's on our radar, but nobody knows what's wrong with it, so it's hard to diagnose and fix. But at some point in time, we're probably just going to have to throw our hands in the air when it gets to the point where it's not working correctly, and we'll have to get everything on. <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Thank you for the work that you put in. Today. Just wait for your email. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you. I uh, really appreciate it. I understand your motion. Here. I oh, well, so, but, yep. You got to make a motion. Make a act first. And, yes. <laughs> and the planning commission will do that first. Yes. Oh, yeah. You kind of like <laughs> 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 I'll be done. That, that could have been disastrous. <laughs> uh, thanks, staff, for all the hard work that you've done on the series. Uh, commissioners, you have uh, all the reports from all the staff. You charge coming up with a plan. Are there any modifications that you would like to see? Changes? If not the chair in a motion to approve the CIP as presented. I'd make a motion to, to accept the CIP as presented uh, as, as drafted and presented by the city staff. Thank you. Is there a second of that motion? Mrs. Bauer, I'll second that <clears throat> motion. There's been a motion made and seconded to accept the uh, CIP as uh, presented this evening. Yes, I think we have a roll call, please. Peterson? Yes. Van Wagner? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. Faber? Yes. Bauer? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I think it is approved. So um, we're sending it on forward to the council. And with that, there being no further business before the planning commission, we will stand adjourned. <laughs> so unless there's any questions, comments, um, City Council will do the same. I'll entertain a motion to approve the CIP. We approve the CIP as printed. Second. Second. By wall chat. By wall chat. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it was just confirming for a second. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Johnson? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Nowak? Yes. Councilman, Councilwoman Walchek? Yes. And Mayor Walagora? Motion carried. I move we adjourn. Second. <laughs> <laughs>